everybody, welcome to Matt Men. This is our worst of 2022 special. Hi, Rich. Hi. Andrew. How are you? I am good. How about you? You feel like crap. I get it. I know. Mm-hmm. I get it. Um... Uh, Worst of 2022. You feel the worst that you felt in 2022 right now. I, I do. I did get the C word uh, not too long ago, and this is actually worse. And it's not. It's not the C word. It's not the C word. We can't say uh-uh. that word. We got. We no. got demonetized if we say that word. Wild. We're banned. We can't say that word. Got, mm-hmm. No, no, no. You can't say it. Uh, yeah, you look better though from yesterday. I appreciate it. Yeah, you I look felt, better I felt from real our... gross yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look way better from yesterday. But a lot of bad stuff. You're going to feel a lot more worse because uh, and gross because a lot of negative this year. Uh, we'll probably go down as a very historic year for professional wrestling. Crazy. You know, I an Observer Live, we were talking about this, and Dave's been doing these yearbooks. Have you have you checked that? I got you one of these, didn't I? Yeah, it's very fascinating that it's just like this these compendiums that are put together of like full years of wrestling observers. And you, you get you get like a novel at the end of the year, essentially. Yeah, which I love that. I, I think it's really cool to go back and read, you know, and it goes like obviously month by month. It's chronological to kind of see the, the, pro- the progression throughout the year. The last one that came out was 95, which is the year that Nitro debuted. So obviously it was a huge mega year because it changed wrestling in, yeah. in a year or two. But you know, this is this year is going to be one of those years, and obviously the big story is Vince McMahon stepping down from WWE, and the lead up to this was even more fascinating because it was at one point in this company every McMahon left. Yes, the McMahon's abandoned ship. Because you know what? Once this Vince stuff came out, we were like, "Oh, the writing must have been on the wall, like internally." Well. I- it will not in January. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say they got wind of this sometime in late March of what was going on. You know, it's interesting that this is on the worst list. I think this is on like unfortunate. It it was it was for the best that he stepped down, right? Negatives. We're going with with, with things that are negative more than anything yeah. else you know it was yeah. it was a it was a negative that he you know the process of it the whole story was a mm-hmm. negative but i think the big the big story may turn into a positive for wwe for him stepping down so. obviously uh the sexual uh assault allegations and the sexual misconduct allegations are never a positive but uh as far as the company goes it really did not turn into this mm-hmm. negative for them which a lot of people thought it would be you know, they yeah. thought that stock would tank. They thought all this stuff, and it didn't really turn into that. But Vince McMahon leaving, obviously, it's going to be a big story here as far as, like, negative moments in 2022. CM Punk losing his mind, though. that That's the real... You think that's the worst of? I think, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff on this list that's, like, really unfortunate. But I think the one that's going to stick out in people's minds is like CM Punk, like basically shooting a cannonball into like whatever relationship he had with everybody backstage in AEW, you know, which um, Garrett uh, Gonzalez apparently coined as a muffin gate. Garrett Gonzalez didn't coin this as muffin gate. <laughs> He's also banned from Facebook. Did you hear about that? Who Garrett or CM Punk? <laughs> Garrett. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. It's all those. He's like a big troll, those, right? He's a big troller, Garrett. He just goes on there and just starts trolling mommy groups on Facebook. I don't know why he does that. <laughs> well, he does. Don't you guys wear shirts that say "I love hot moms"? That's all we do when we're live, pal. I gotta start doing it. <laughs> it's a what really wacky show, you, all man. you do is talk about hot moms. Oh man, I'm missing out. It's a really but, wacky show. But oh, seriously, my... like if you're even if you're a fair weather wrestling fan. This is one of those stories where you're it's on YouTube. You could see the meltdown on YouTube. You didn't see the fight that happened afterwards, but you you could see the meltdown at the media scrum where like everybody is, who's being interviewed is pretty much like semi in character, right? It starts out with like Jericho and Keith Lee kind of semi in character, like calling out their opponents, etc. And you know what? You think that's happening with the CM Punk thing, but then you could tell it takes like an obvious turn once Tony Khan starts kind of like doing like these really big eyed reactions. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I poor wish Tony. this guy would stop talking. You know? Yeah, poor, poor Tony <laughs> in that in that bizarre situation he was sitting in. 
I I don't know. I I think this is also this is a big the reason why this is the worst. This is a big negative for AEW, and this kind of started the meltdown as far as the mm-hmm. the the perception of the company, and it sucked a lot of the wind out of that company. You know, great example yeah. is we were at Grand Slam. That followed yes. this. This was the next mega show that they had, and the 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 mood was very mm-hmm. different from a year prior. Yes. And I think the mood was definitely, oh, you know what? And like reasonably so, a lot of the mood was like, you know what? Fuck you guys for taking this away from us. It was. Yeah. It was. And, you know, like it's not AEW's fault. It's not Tony's fault. But, right. you know, at the end of the day, he's the leader of this. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm a big believer of management is responsible for all of it. Like I, I follow that by for my own dealings. I can only blame myself when something gets out of hand if it's in my position to to steer the ship. Right. I'm sure Tony feels like that too a little bit, you know? Some of the and, responsibility and- is on him. He, I'm sure he would have handled this much differently. Uh, but you're dealing with lunatics at the end of the day. Exactly. And the guy has to set an example. You know, like you can't not you can't let something like this happen. Plus, like the the backstage brawl happen without setting an example for everybody else. You know, but at the same time, you don't hear shit like this from that locker room, right? I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear from either locker room, but especially that one because I I think that AEW survival is a necessity for pro wrestling. I, I don't it, it, the detractors yeah. can't ten, see that for whatever reason. Because they've they've become so this is such a religion for people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To pick a side in pro wrestling, but I don't think they understand the the importance of having AEW in existence as a close number two or a faint number two or just existing as a profitable number two. This company being around is good for wrestling. It's very good yeah. for wrestling. And you know when you when you see the comments, you realize these people are not here for wrestling. They're here for whatever else. They're here for. They're not here for. Drama. They don't give a shit. The business does well. They just want to see Roman Reigns on TV, and that's it. It's a di- yeah, very different way of looking at it. It's very two dimensional on uh, uh, to to a certain extent. You know what this reminds me of too. Like now that we're talking about kind of like backstage stuff that we don't want to know about. Um, it's not as not as like not as bad as like the the brawl. But the last time I think something like this happened was when Jericho confronted Brock Lesnar. Right. Where like Brock and Randy didn't yeah. tell anybody that they were going to bleed or it seemed it looked like Brock was taking liberties with Randy Orton. And apparently Jericho got in his face like at the end of the night in Gorilla. Yeah. But nobody was fired. Nobody was fired from there. You well, because they, you know, they brought him aside and were like, yeah, we planned it, dude. Yeah. You know, wild stuff. But yeah. how about this one? Cody not choosing to resign with AEW 215. I mean, we were covering this. We were. Uh, I called you when I was told this, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, he's not signing. I just got word he's not signing. I, you know, you could see the writing on the wall with this one, you know, because of all those weirdo promos he was cutting. Um, that, that one where he, he cut that, like, promo, and it was like, it, it was almost like he was starting a program with Punk. Mm-hmm. Right? He was like, I'm, I don't yeah. know when I'm going to get a chance to say this, mm-hmm. but I'm going to do it right now. Uh, and he was like, I'm the forbidden door. I'm the one that's done the crossover. I'm the one that left WWE, went to Japan, went to Ring of Honor, went, you know, right. started this revolution. And it seemed like he, he took a shot at Punk here in yep. that promo. And then that was it. That was also the promo, I believe, the crowd was chanting Royal Rumble at him. Were they? Yeah. Interesting. Because, like, the, I think the writing was on the wall for a couple of weeks. He did that whole angle with uh, Malachi where he left his boots in the ring, but then wrestled like a couple of months later or like whatever, you know, like it was just yeah. like a weird series of events. Very weird. What I think was the the for, per, perception wise what the downside of Cody not choosing to resign with uh, AEW is that his guys lost a lot of steam, you know, because he would put the Nightmare Factory in some kind of capacity like on television regularly, you know, like a guy like Anthony Agogo. Uh, I think it stopped Ricky Starks from getting that push. You know, you had a QT Marshall and like all those other guys showing up on TV regularly and they're, they're coming out every so often now, 
but I think it was like a big ding against them and the Dark Order stuff too. Yeah, yeah, definitely, hundred uh, percent. Definitely, ch things changed in that company after he left. Yeah, Sasha and Naomi walked out of Monday Night Raw, citing poor booking decisions. This is still ongoing. We're going. Sasha is going to New Japan in some capacity. We know that. Is Sasha showing up on on January 11th? We'll find out. People think yes. People think no. Now you kind of. I mean, what the hell do you do now? You've kind of set people's expectations up. So we'll see what happens there. Ric Flair wrestled his last match. I watched it last night, dude. My father wanted to see it. Oh, really? Yeah. What did he think? Listen, he looks terrible. That's what he said. <laughs> he looks like melting ice cream, Andrew. Uh, you know what a. And that match, that match was was tainted too because he hurt his foot and he couldn't do much. Yeah, and wasn't um didn't it come out this week that Ricky Steamboat was supposed to be uh one of the opponents? And Ricky was Ricky always backed out. Yeah, because he found out that he had a pacemaker. That's Ricky's story. And Flair had a pacemaker. Yeah, Flair has a pacemaker, yeah. and he didn't want to wrestle. But he, Ricky Steamboat wrestled, and that's not even on our list. Really nuts, too. And that guy said he was not going to wrestle. Yeah. I think Steve he Austin. always have Steve, Steve Austin. Austin wrestled. Yeah. I think the heart stuff is way more different than the next stuff, you know? Big E broke his neck right before Mania. Oh, terrible. 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 That that's enough to be on the worst of. MJF threatens to walk out of double or nothing. I was at double or nothing. I witnessed all of this. Oh yeah. Another bizarre AEW night. Mm. Pretty much in real time, right? I mean you yeah. were play by playing it as you because you and Meltzer, you were with Dave. I was you with Dave. I was with Dave and I was with Brian. I was with Garrett, and we're sitting there in, in Tony's suite. Not Tony Khan, Tony Leader. Uh, we were sitting in Tony's suite. <laughs> Tony and from just, F4W. <laughs> yeah, Tony from F4W. And mm -hmm. we're like, what the hell's happening here? And we're just getting it all in real time. It was actually, Suncast witnessed the whole thing, and he was like blown away by it. He's like, wow, this is actually very interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. He loves gossip, that guy. He's a big TMZ guy. He goes on Perez Hilton all the time. That's all he does, <laughs> is celebrity gossip. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. Uh, CM Punk broke his foot right after winning the title. You know what? That was the Ugh. beginning. That was the beginning of the end. Yeah. Because remember, everybody called him a bozo for doing that. Exactly. But it's always like those weird moves that these guys do, you know, when it's not on TV and they end up hurting themselves, you know, knock on wood. Darby has remained healthy. Did you see the clip of him jumping uh, a Jeep over his house? Yes. You know, like, I think somebody saw that and was like, hey, don't do shit like that. This guy's breaking his foot stage diving. Don't be jumping your Jeep over, over your house, dude. Jeff Hardy suspended for DUI. That was a big story in the summer. He's still not back. He's still dealing with this. I don't know. I don't know the status sucks, of him. Man. I hope he's getting better. Uh, terrible. Yeah. Brian Kendricks gets released by WWE only to get picked up by AEW on the same week. And then all of his conspiracy theory videos come out and exposes oh, him boy. immediately. Uh, you know, some wacky freaking points of view, man. <laughs> I don't know. He did come out and say it was idiotic, though, right? He did say, like, these were idiotic <laughs> thoughts that I had because I was reading nonsense and... <laughs> Uh, I, I was believing wanna, it. Yeah, that was kind of. <laughs> I was reading it. nonsense and believing it. I mean, some of this stuff <laughs> is really nutty stuff. Uh, I don't even want to go into it. You know, it's funny because, like, whenever we do these things, um, again, not to poo-poo on anybody, but it's funny how, like, every company has lunatics working for it, right? But when you're in the wrestling business, it seems like you're closer to being exposed for being a lunatic, you know, yeah. because I'm sure I'm sure there's like uh, there's somebody who works in the mailroom at, let's say, like Reuters or the New York Times, who probably has a litany of YouTube conspiracy theory videos that will yeah. never be released. And no, they're just like, not. oh, have you seen like Dave, Dude. the mail guys, friggin <laughs> like lizard people videos? Dude, Whoa, that's we were crazy. <laughs> my, our Christmas. You came over for Christmas Eve. Right to the house. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Uh, we, Coco was telling us that he's a flat earther, and I was only mm -hmm. there for an hour and a half. 
He didn't. He didn't <laughs> say that he's a flat earther, but he's like, dude, I could kind of, I could see, I could see why they would believe the Earth is flat. I'm like, why? Tell me how. I, I thought Give he me was doing reason. a bit, dude. I thought so too. I I believed it until the next day, and I brought it up. He's like, he's like, okay. He's like, okay. Listen, how do, how are you so sure that that isn't true? I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe because we've gone to space. He's like, have we? I'm like, okay, we have telescopes in the sky. He's like, I'm like, so is it, is it that we're like a sheet? Is it like, uh, and I'm like, okay, now, now I'm going to buy you into this, right? Is the world flat long way? Or is it like a circular flat? He's like, it's flat long way. Like, like, oh, what are you, boy. what are you a fucking idiot? It's flat long way. There's icicles blocking the waters. And I'm like, okay, but how about every other planet? Every other planet is round and spherical and three dimensional. He's like, I don't know, man. I'm just telling you. And then he walked away. <laughs> that's always the response of these guys. Listen, like, and you know what? And we fucked up because this is, that's our fault that that conversation started. It is. Because we were making the joke of like, yo. Flat Mars. Forget about, yeah, forget about flat Earth. We're flat Marsers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're flat Martians. Uh, MG, I think MG thinks the world's flat. No. I think he, MG he, thinks the world is a cube. He like, thinks it's uh, a cube. Like bizarro world. <laughs> <laughs> You I think what? you should move on to the next subject. No, we're not. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, don't tell us what to do, you cubed earther. You mole man. Center of the earth people. All right. Brian Kendrick. I would love I would love to believe in Hollow Earth though. I if you that know what I'm real like there's a tunnel, you go through it, there's all these like weird are they humanoids? What are they? Mole men. They're mole men. Have to be. And crab people. Be mole men. And crab people. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I'm so into it, dude. Shane McMahon booking Royal Rumble and then getting ousted. January. Mm. That was a bizarre story. I, I would love yeah. to know the real part of that. Vince McMahon yeah. wrestled Pat McAfee. I don't think that was a worst of. I, I, I thought that was I thought that was pretty freaking cool. I was into it. That was it. good for Pat. That was good Listen, for Pat. 100%. It was great for Pat. I thought it was pretty cool. And then and then Vince takes the worst stunner. Yeah, of course he took the worst stunner, but he's never taken a good one. I didn't I wasn't as surprised. A lot of people, here's another one. NWA puts mm -hmm. the title on Tyrus. A lot of people are very upset over this. Yeah. I don't, you know, is it because of his political stance or is it because it's Tyrus? I think it's, I think people were upset because he ha he got into that whole thing about sending unsolicited uh, DPs to uh, oh, yes. some lady he worked yes. with. Yes. Okay. You know what? It is the worst stuff. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I'm playing with Milo uh, and Clay while I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm making my own moment. I'm making a village a little of crab clay man. people. Little clay people. Uh, Jonathan Gresham gets into a shouting match with Tony Khan after dropping the Ring of Honor title. All right. I mean, that's that's less of a big deal for me. You're not a Gresh fan. Um, No, I think he's super talented. <clears throat> I just don't know, you know. I, I think he's great. I think he's a very good wrestler. I just don't, you know, there's so many other options. Like, I understand why they took the title off of him at that time. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's also, it's a title match, you know? Like, you do you do what your boss tells you to do. That's it. Read the other guy. Read the next note. Do you have the note in front of you? I was going to ask you to read it because no, no, no. I, I know what the read. right answer is. No. Uh, it's Andrade gets suspended by punching Sammy. Yeah, Gilmore, yeah, but how right? did he spell it? What did he, what did he Andretti. write? Andretti. Mario Andretti. Andretti. The race car Mario driver, Andretti. right? <laughs> Mario Andretti. Mario Andretti gets, gets suspended. suspended, yeah, uh, for punching uh, Sammy Guevara. It's Andrade gets suspended for punching Sammy Guevara. Uh, you already had heat with Eddie Kingston. It's yeah. directed that at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. You already had heat with Eddie. Uh, I don't want heat with Eddie at all. All right. That was bizarre. I don't know if that was his way of trying to get out of his contract, but he's also really, he's banged up. He tore his pec, I think. Andrade? Yeah. Andrade's yeah, injured well, or shoulder, something like that. Charlotte returned back, so I don't know if he wants to go back there. Kota Ibushi accuses New Japan of sexual harassment and abuse of power. That was uh, that was in the early in the year. And Mandy Rose gets fired for inappropriate paywall content. This is I, listen. If she did this to get to get fired, I think she's brilliant. Absolutely. If she posted what she posted without thinking she would get fired, I think she's a dum dum. Yes, I think you, she knew what you, she was doing. You can't smart guys, move. Guys, guys, listen. You can't post your asshole on the internet and then go, what, what do you mean I'm fired? It doesn't work yeah, like what, that. What do you mean I can't do that? What do you mean I can't? Listen, I think she... Listen, I'm not a prude here. I think it's great what she's doing. 
I think she should continue doing what she's doing if she's happy doing it. She should make all the money in the freaking world. But I, I cannot comprehend the, the concept of, you know, posting lewds to the point of, like, listen, it's not, they're not bikini photos she was posting. Like, she was, they were, they're, they're essentially, she's nude. I mean, yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. much she, she's butt-ass naked and you see everything. But I, I don't understand the people that are like, well, WWE, I can't believe WWE fired her and they made her into, like, a sex icon. Like, that was her thing. I'm like, yeah, but they're not, like, right. showing her asshole on, on NXT. Right. Hey, listen, man. That could that could be in the works with Triple H's. Uh, maybe maybe Triple H's. XXX Raw XXX. Right. Maybe this is what they were leading up to. Uh, but <laughs> you know, I I think she probably was like, I can't believe it took these idiots this long to figure this out. She was doing this for a while. It wasn't like all of a sudden. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, and, people you told me what? that she. People told me at one point she was messaging. Uh, people were like posting her content on Twitter, and she would DM them mm. from her account and be like, "Hey, dude, take this down. Take this shit down. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. I'm gonna get fired." But maybe at one point she was like, "I don't know how long this took me. I, I, why did they t- it take them this long? They had no clue what was behind that paywall." But again, you know what? There was probably people who knew and who were like, "Listen, uh, I like seeing these pictures, so I'm, not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep quiet." Yeah. Tino Sabatelli, yeah. winner of the year. Yeah, <laughs> that's your favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite, winner of the year. All right. What's one thing you hoped would happen, hoped happened that didn't? What is one thing that you wanted to see this year that did not happen, Rich? Uh, I want to say the Tanahashi CM Punk match. Tanahashi CM Punk. Right? Because then we ended up getting uh, Tanahashi versus Mox. We got Tanahashi versus Mox, which it didn't really mean as much. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, I think that's yeah. that's a big one. Um, Dwayne, maybe maybe Dwayne and and Roman didn't happen, obviously, this year. Yeah. But it looks like it could be possibly happening this coming year in 2023. Uh, MG, what do you have there? I was thinking uh, the, Brian Danielson. Uh, I don't... I think the, we we expected more out of him this year, right? Yeah, he was banged up for a little picture. bit. Yeah, yeah, I would have loved to see him in a title picture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who mm-hmm. title reigns? Cody. You know, more from Cody. Yeah. Obviously, he got injured, so we didn't see that. Um, yeah, big. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. And then also everything CM Punk was doing. You know, I would have loved to see what the plan was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got a question. I'll I'll promote this. Ask you guys this: If Cody doesn't get hurt, do you think uh, they? Put the t- take the title off of Roman at SummerSlam, and he gets it there. I don't know SummerSlam, but I I I would imagine that's a great question. I got to look at my notes because I don't think it was in the plans for him to win the title yet, Cody. I yeah, think I the definitely plan think- the plan was for twenty twenty three, but I do think he was going to build his way up there. Right. You know, he was going to... And and here's the other thing that we should talk about, right? We we are all very excited to have Cody come back, but will he have the same oomph as he did when he returned? Will it be the same or will it be diminished now? Because you've had time to marinate on this. I think the big part of it was that he defected from one company to the other. Right. You know, he left in February, was at WrestleMania in April... And then he was gone by May. So will it mean as much when he returns and the music hits and he comes out and does his thing because it time has passed? Do people want to see him take the title away from Roman? Because Roman supremacy has risen tremendously from January to now. Oh, yeah. It didn't decline. The Roman stuff didn't, didn't, has not declined, in my opinion. I think it's 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 been a gradual incline. So, Cody coming back, do you boo Cody? Do the fans want to see the title off of Roman? I I think that's a big question for this year. That's a huge question. Um, I do think if WWE does it the right way, obviously, Cody's going to have a huge, huge pop on his return. People like the guy. You know, I think he's one of those guys that's, you know, he's still young. He's a veteran, and people have not forgotten him. Yeah, no, they haven't. So very. I got another match for you. That, yeah, give me one. Um, 
Uh, Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. That doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon. And Does not look like it's happening. Yeah. Happen. Uh, yeah. It seems like the match is going to be Rhea Ripley and Ronda at WrestleMania. So, and now Charlotte's back. So that changes everything. So that whole dynamic is there. And Ronda Rousey had a terrible year. Yeah. She lost all, all that she had built up. You know, when she came into that company, it went away. She's just another person there. That's not liked. Mm -hmm. On TV. By a Ronda Rousey tag, hashtag was a few I, I think, uh, Yeah, started. I think that's ridiculous stuff. I, I, I think it people is, have this but... weird idea of Ronda, and I don't know. It doesn't fit their narrative, I guess, she, you know, for her. But I think as far as, like, working, she's just not on the good program. They they softened her and made her into everybody else, and that's that's not what made her special. Uh, a lot of people passed away this year before we wrap it up here. Scott Hall, Dave Hebner, Tim White. Sarah Lee from Tough Enough. Uh, who else? Mickey Henson. Candy Devine. Devine. Yeah. Antonio, Antonio Inoki. Inoki. Uh, Katamura. Starman from CMLL. Gene LaBelle. Tarzan from FMW. Tarzan Goto, I should say. Stefan Bonner. You know, uh, wild year here. Yeah, very sad. Very sad. So uh, that was the worst stuff. Out of all the bad things, Rich, overall, what's your number one? Uh, you know, like like Biggie getting hurt, maybe? Because all this other stuff is just like contract stuff and yeah. he said, she said. But, you know, you never want to see a guy get hurt. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a yeah. terrible thing. Yeah. All right, guys. That was our worst stuff. We'll see you for the prediction show next. See you next time.